I was smooth sailing. I was coasting. I was enjoying it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. Happy Thanksgiving to all of my US friends who celebrated this past weekend was, was Thanksgiving. I hope you had plenty to eat, got to hang out with family, friends, or just enjoyed a cozy long weekend at home knitting or making all the things. Uh, yeah, Dennis and I, we got out to Pennsylvania to visit his brother and family and then spent the rest of the weekend just chilling out at home, getting things done and making all the things. I have so much to share with you because yeah, it's it's been two weeks since I sat down to catch you up on what I've been up to. And I've been up to quite a lot, my friends. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, by the way, if you are new here, hello, welcome, I am Kristen. This is a channel primarily about knitting and sewing and making all the things. We dive down many crafty rabbit holes here. So if that is your jam, gather around, grab a cup of something. I've got my Friedrich mug right here. This is by, oh, I keep blanking on the maker who makes these adorable, amazing mugs. If you're curious, I'll pop a link to her website down below, but I did purchase this from the New England Fiber Festival several years ago. Uh, she does a lot of festivals, but you know, she does have a website so you can browse that as well. Uh, so yeah, cheers and let's get into things. Let's talk about what I am wearing this week. And yes, it is indeed, we're beyond sweater weather at this point. I mean, it's, it's chilly, it, winter. Winter is coming. It is on the horizon. So I've pulled out all of my knitwear. We are in cozy sweater season officially, and it feels so good. Uh, but today I am wearing my Fiola pullover. It is a pattern by Isabel Kramer and knit out of Mayak yarns. I actually knit this as part of a knit along for the Knit Together with Kim and Jana YouTube channel. They hosted a I knit along in collaboration with Mayak and Isabel Kramer, and it was it was the best time. And I can tell you the sweater is gonna get so much wear. I mean, the feel of it, it is so buttery soft. The color is everything. Uh, I'll stand up so you can see it. And yeah, I, I love the length of it. I purposefully made it a little bit of a crop. Uh, it has a faux seam along the side here, and then it has this beautiful lace detail along the arms. And yeah, I mean, I'll pop a link to the episode where I talk more about the sweater in depth because the construction was so unique. I enjoyed every stitch and yeah, just uh, it looks super complicated, but Truly, it was such a joy and a breeze to knit. I cannot recommend it more. So that is my Fiola, again, by Isabel Kramer, and I'll link to it and just about everything I mentioned in this episode. It'll, it'll all be linked down below in the description box for your clicking pleasure. Marga the Mannequin, she is not wearing knitwear this week. Normally, I like to dress her up in knitwear and talk about it. Uh, I will get to what Margo's wearing later on in the episode because we are garment sewing once again, my friends. And yeah, I'm, I'm very, very excited about it, but we're gonna talk knitting first and then sewing. So hold that thought. As for works in progress, as you know, I have quite a few things on the go. Uh, I've honestly lost track and you know, I feel like I went through a week of finishing all the things and now I'm just kind of like treading water trying to figure out what I wanna finish next. And sometimes that can cause a little overwhelm. And when that happens, the next best thing is to just obviously cast on something new, which I have. So I do have a new cast on to share with you, but just to regale you with what's front of mind and what I have been working on <laughs> lately that just kind of, I've let fall into the wayside. I truly honestly didn't see this coming because I was having so much fun with it. And then, and then, I don't wanna say disaster struck because that would be exaggerating, but uh, I did hit a wall. And if you watch this channel, you know when I hit a wall with my knitting, I have a tendency to let things fall to the wayside and kind of forget about them. And with this project that I'm gonna show you now, I honestly did not see it coming. I was smooth sailing, I was coasting, I was enjoying it. And that project is <laughs> the Travel Mode 2.0. My gosh, guys, look how huge this thing is. It is massive and you know, I did get a little further than the midpoint. And I will say that, you know, all the way up until the midpoint, I was fine. I was fine, but then the midpoint, after you knit the midpoint, you have to knit the entire first section in reverse. So, you know, so soon it's uh, Suzanne Summer who designed this wonderful pattern. You know, she's super clever and she knows what she's doing. Um, you know, she, you have, suddenly you're doing the increases and decreases in a different way, in a different direction. And for some reason, 
my brain just couldn't wrap around it at the time. So I began knitting the second half and realized that my stitch count was significantly off. And you know, I, I thought, I thought that I could easily fudge things like, you know, squeak in a, a stitch here and there, but the way that this pattern is designed, it's a little impossible because you're constantly shifting stitches from one needle to the other. You're letting some hang out on the, the cord if you're using circulars. And it's like baking. If you have one ingredient off, the whole, the whole thing gets thrown off. So, uh, you know, I ended up ripping all the way back, starting over, but for some reason, my stitch count kept getting messed up. And once again, I tried fudging things, you know, adding stitches in here and there. And again, it just did not work. And I didn't realize it until <laughs> I knit an entirely new angle into this pattern that is not supposed to be there. So, so yeah, let me explain. As you can see, this pattern for the most part is entirely garter stitch. I mean, I wanna say like 99.9% .9 of it is garter stitch. And I also happen to have the ability to knit without looking at my hands. So while I was working on this, <laughs> I was also binge watching a, a series on Netflix and completely didn't, no, like bother to look down at what my hands were doing except you know to shuffle stitches to shuffle stitches around and it didn't occur to me that this random angle was forming in my knit so in my project so I will hold it up to the camera yeah what is that <laughs> why is that there that should not be there my goodness so at that point I was like I'm not ripping back again I just ran it two and a half sections and you know what it's it's just gonna go in the timeout bin because as much as I'm enjoying this pattern, I will be honest, it's not something that I'm desperate to have in my wardrobe. And there's so many other projects that I'm just itching to cast on. I mean, it's a beautiful, again, nothing wrong with the pattern. When it was going right, I was having a blast with it. I was enjoying it. It's exactly what my hands, my mind, my soul needed at the time. And I know that if this goes in timeout, this will, this will be here waiting to be finished. When I'm in the mood to revisit it, rip it back out and figure out where I went wrong, it's just gonna be a really nice project to come back to. So, you know, not all is lost, but the travel mode 2.0 shawl is sadly in a time out. So that's the state of that. While my Travel Mo 2.0 shawl is kind of a want want situation, I would be remiss not to mention the amazing and gorgeous, beautiful travel modes that are popping up in our private Facebook group. I mean, if you are a member of this YouTube channel, you do get access to our private Facebook group where we have knit alongs, where we can safely have knit alongs without trolls descending upon the comments section. And anyway, it's the only way for me to do it. But I did host a Travel Mo 2.0 shawl knit along over in our group and it's just been so wonderful and so fun to see all your beautiful versions of it and yeah today at the time that I'm recording this it's December 1st um, that knit along has come to an end and I will be announcing the giveaway winner so if you are a member of this YouTube channel and have participated in the travel mode make along uh, be sure to check our community tab because I will be announcing the winner of the giveaway prize over there and also in the Facebook group proper. And if you would like to become a member of this YouTube channel and wanna support the work that I do here and gain access to uh, additional bonus content from yours truly, uh, you can do that by clicking the join button down below this video or on the homepage of this YouTube channel. So, okay, now on to, wait, what else have I been working on? Oh yes, yes, my easy V, my easy V a pullover by Caitlin Hunter, and another project that I am thoroughly enjoying, but just waiting for the right moment to progress with it. Uh, so let me see, this is the back and this is the front. Okay, so Easy V Pullover by Caitlin Hunter. The yarn that I'm using is uh, Spin Cycle Yarns for the Yoke. Let me see. Um, the, the teal shade colorway right here is called Deep Bump. The yellow is called Salty Dog. And this uh, neutral black gray, white cream, whatever you want to call it, is Stay, Stay Ready? Stay Ready, I believe. And the main color is yarn by Knitting for Olive in their, I think, Worsted Merino. And guys, this project... It's, it's as easy as it sounds. It's just so wonderful. Even the color work is just a walk in the park. It looks complicated, but it's just the effect of the, the gradient marl happening in the spin cycle. It just adds so much more 
depth to it, if that makes any sense. But yeah, they, I, I have not hit a wall with this pattern. Uh, again, I'm just waiting for the right moment where I can just where I can just focus on the sleeves because as you can see, I'm on Sleeve Island and I'm at the point where I'm ready to start the color work portion of the sleeve. So again, while the color work on this pattern is very simple and a breeze, it's, you know, it, I do have to look down at what my hands are doing. If only, if only I had the gift of knitting color work without having to look at my hands. I mean, that would just, that, that would be great, but I am not that knitter. I would actually be very curious to know if there are any knitters out there that can actually knit color work without looking down at their hands. Random, random thought thinking out loud, but um, Hazel Tyndall, she might be able to because she's just a color work knitting genius. She's like the fastest knitter in the world, apparently, according to Guinness Book of World Records. I could see her being able to do that. Anyway, just, just thinking out loud. Now that my Travel Mode 2.0 shawl is on a hiatus, <laughs> I should really sit down and finish this because it is so fun, guys. I, I'm, you know, again, another pattern that I am truly enjoying working on. But in the spirit of cheering myself up after putting my travel mode in time out, I decided to cast on a new thing. Because for the longest time, I feel like I've been saying on this channel that I really want a basic black cardigan for my wardrobe and I've never gotten around to actually knitting it. I don't know why, but these past few weeks I made it happen. I finally cast on a cardigan. I really need to knit more cardigans because I, you know, for the most part, I think I wear pullovers outside, like if I'm going somewhere, but at home, I love wearing cardigans just because, you know, I, well, I do run cold. It's like if I'm running around doing a lot of things, I get warm and then I have to take off my sweater. So it's helpful just to have a cardigan that I can easily pull on and take off. Anyway, that's, that's the method behind my madness. So anyway, cast on a cardigan, the Kahlua cardigan by Thea Coleman. I'll pop a photo of it here so you can see what it looks like. And I absolutely love the shape of this cardigan. I mean, I love the texture, I love the braid detail along the side, but the other thing that drew me to this pattern is the opening, like the opening of the cardigan. Uh, a lot of cardigans that I see on, you know, Ravelry have, you know, either like a rounded neck and just, I'm not too much of a fan about the way that they kind of flop open, especially the cardigans with a really high neckline where it comes over here and then just straight down. I feel like those just kind of flop out and you can see the innards of your cardigan too much. I don't know, it's just, my personal brand of crazy um, and some other ones where they only kind of look good on me if they're button clothes where it kind of has like a curve or like a v-neck and just by looking at this cardigan I can tell it's gonna fall really nicely w whether or not it's buttoned closed or left open and true to form I did not read the description before purchasing the pattern so when I purchased it I realized that this cardigan is actually knit from the bottom up not top down uh, my typically my preferred method of knitting a sweater or a cardigan. Because typically when you knit a sweater or a cardigan from the bottom up, it's a little trickier to gauge your uh, the length of the sweater. So you, you kind of have to be a little bit more mindful. Not that in hindsight, that would have prevented me from casting this on in the first place. I, I was just determined to get this on my needles. But uh, I, was, I wasn't really prepared to be on Sleeve Island as quickly <laughs> as, as the pattern has you. Because it's knit from the bottom up, uh, typically those patterns have you start out with the sleeves so you can attach them later um not not with all patterns but this one in particular so you know we we are you know it's been two weeks since i sat down and chatted with you but i have two sleeves i am off sleeve island uh that was quick even though i was like Ugh, i have to start with the sleeves first this turned out to be surprisingly uh, you know, a walk in the park. I mean, the pattern, I love the texture of it. It's this kind of, um, let me see, seed stitch rib, alternating seed stitch rib textured pattern. It kind of reminds me of a waffle pattern, but it's it's got another element to it. Um, it's really simple to memorize, and uh, indeed I could knit it and not look at my hands. Very, very autopilot, but that's only because I did a slight modification to the sleeves. So Thea Coleman originally has you do sleeve shaping. So, you know, you start with the cuff and then you gradually increase your stitches along the arms. But as I've mentioned in the past, whenever I do sleeve shaping, it just, like, the, the fit is always like sausage casing. And I did knit one whole sleeve. So I basically I knit three sleeves. So the first sleeve that I knit with the the shaping turned out to be too tight, felt like sausage casing. I don't know why. It's just my luck of the draw. Uh, so I decided to knit 
a new sleeve, but instead of following the directions and gradually increasing the sleeve stitches, I knit the cuff. Uh, maybe, I, I think I added another inch to the cuff, just personal preference, and then did a rapid increase uh, before starting the, the textured pattern, the rib pattern. And honestly, I love it so much more than a fitted sleeve. Granted, did this one have a f No, I even forewent the, the sleeve shaping on this sweater too, because you know, this fits me fine. I love it. Um, but yeah, I, I just like the, the look. Oh no, am I ripping out my stitches? No, I'm not. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, yeah, I just like the look in general of this type of sleeve, this little kind of bubble mushroom effect here. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I, you know, I'm off Sleeve Island. I'm ready to embark on Body Island and very, very excited about that because I think once, you know, we have the sleeves and we have the body, we get to join everything together and then it's really all about decreasing to the neckline and we will have a cardigan. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying that pattern as well. As for the yarn, let me go get it over here. So. This is yarn that I picked up from my local yarn shop, uh, the Nimble Thimble. It's literally like a 15 minute walk away from me. And they were having a huge summer sale or end of summer sale, I should say, and picked up a sweater's quantity worth of this yarn, Cascade Yarn 220 Superwash. It's absolutely nothing fancy, but for $11 US with 20% off, I was like, this yarn would be perfect for the cardigan that I'm looking to knit. And again, I'm looking for just a basic everyday cardigan that, you know, I don't have to worry about felting. I can just throw in the wash and just wear around the house when I'm working during the winter and, you know, just something to keep me warm. And I figured this yarn would be perfect for that. Uh, and yeah, again, it's Cascade Yarns 220 Superwash, 100% Superwash wool in this really lovely basic heather, dark heather gray, I should say. Color 900 if you're curious. And yeah, what else do I wanna say about it other than it's just really lovely workhorse yarn. Uh, I love working with it. It's very soft. It's knitting up to be very squishy. And I think it's gonna make a really nice cardigan. And I'm trying to think, yeah, that is pretty much all I've been knitting on. Uh, so let's move along to sewing because Marga the Mannequin, she has, she's, she's wearing something that I'm very excited to talk with you about. If you watched my Halloween episode, you know that I sewed my, my Halloween costume and that kind of reignited my, <laughs> my love for sewing garments uh, because it was, it, I'm not gonna lie, it was down in the dumps for quite some time. And, you know, after sewing that, I kind of fell back in love with the process of, you know, sewing a pattern from start to finish, like using all these techniques to create, create something wearable. And, you know, even though it was a Halloween costume and I'm probably never going to wear that costume again, except maybe who knows next Halloween or whatever, it was definitely a great way for me to dip my toes back in the water and, you know, get re reacquainted with, with the whole process of making garments. Um, so I got it in my mind to make my own, I don't know, I don't know what it's gonna be honestly, but there is, you know, I'm thinking about maybe it's gonna be a holiday dress or my birthday dress, which is coming up. Um, but there is a dress by The Vampire's Wife that I am absolutely obsessed with. Kate Middleton's worn it. I'll pop a photo of it here, but it's the Falconetti dress by The Vampire's Wife. And it comes in many different colors. I think she has a version out in corduroy now, but the version that Kate Middleton wore, I am obsessed with. I want it, I need it in my wardrobe. And I, you know, just looking at the dress, it has very simple lines. And I was like, if I can find a pattern you know, with those elements, especially big five patterns, when it comes to fashion trends, they I, they know what's up. I mean, you browse their website and you'll see like, you know, the, these billowy bishop sleeves that are all the rage with the square necklines, the baby doll dresses, they're all over it. And you know, this dress in particular, well, it's not that, um, it does have very clean, simple lines with a ruffle at the bottom and on the sleeves. So I took a look at McCall's website and stumbled on two patterns that if I franken piece them together, this will be a dead ringer for the Falcon Itty dress. And um, again, I, I talked at length about this on the, the Monday Waffle. So if you are a member, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Okay, I purchased two patterns. Uh, first being this one right here. This is McCall's M8032. And as you can see, like the top, the top is pretty much a dead ringer for the Falconetti dress. I mean, it even has the the puff sleeves, um, not like they're not seriously puff sleeves, but you know, they have like a little gather, a little volume here. And then it has the ruffle 
along the edge. And the Falconetti dress happens to have two ruffles, which is an easy mod for this pat for this pattern. You just create two ruffles, one longer than the other, and you know, Bob's your uncle. And the skirt, while it is doable, uh, the Falconetti dress, it doesn't have any gathers at the waist. So I continued to look and found this dress right here from the same collection, I believe. Let me see, yeah. So if you look at this dress, this is M8038. And yeah, you can see the skirt falls just flat against the, the waist and the thigh. And it, while it's a little longer, it's easy to shorten. I can shorten it to the knee and then take the ruffle from the other pattern, tack it onto here. Not that ruffles are difficult to make up. Anyway, it's just a long rectangle that you're gathering. Anyway, that is the plan. And I've already made a muslin. Here's the muslin and I apologize. It looks like a big white blob right now, but it very, very slapdash, but it was enough to give me an idea that the pattern would fit. Um, but one thing that I knew going into making this dress or, you know, going into making any pattern that's a big five company pattern, um, I nine out of 10 have to do a small bust adjustment because big five patterns draft their patterns for B cup size. Sizes. And I, yours truly, is somewhere between a double a, double a and an A. So a small bust adjustment is needed. And again, when it comes to sewing, when it comes to sewing garments, um, fit has always been my Achilles heel. It's something that I've always struggled with and doing a small bust adjustment has always been a challenge for me. I could never, I never really grasped it, but this time, this time I was determined and I sat down in front of YouTube, watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos and stumbled on one YouTube channel. I think it's called the Made to Sew YouTube channel. Yes, that's it. And she just broke down everything. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about, you know, tutorials uh, and learning from YouTube because there's so many tutorials for the same topic. It's just a matter of finding that one tutorial that says it in a way that clicks for you, if that makes any sense. But this one tutorial in particular, I mean, she broke down everything for me and it really did click and I nailed it. Uh, so proud of myself for doing it. Let me see, do I have the pattern piece here so I can tell you? Here's the pattern piece that I altered. And in hindsight, I probably should have traced the piece first before cutting into it and making different marks, but um, you know, I love to live on the edge, what can I say? But as you can see, I've made certain slashes along the pattern. I made a slash here, I made a slash here, made a slash here. And then it's just about manipulating the pattern to remove excess fabric from the finished garment. And after you make all those adjustments, you have to recalibrate where the <laughs> where the darts are and you know the length and you know, you've you've moved things around and you have to add things back in. And yeah, is it's like magic. I mean, it's it's sorcery, really. But yeah, the thing that small bust a small bust adjustment will do is that it will remove excess fabric from the finished garments. If I just made that pattern as is, I would just be left with a lot of fabric in the front of the the, the bodice of the dress, and we we really don't want that. We don't want bagginess here when it comes to a fitted dress like that. Because looking at the the model on the pattern and the Falconetti dress, both have very little, if any, ease in the front right here. So we want to remove that. And after having done the small bust adjustment, it fit like a glove, let me tell you. But you're probably wondering, Kristen, where are you going to find the fabric for that dress? <laughs> well, I did a little digging on the internet and, you know, unfortunately, fabric.com, they are no longer in business. So that that is really sad. Uh, that They have been my main source of fabric for quite some time and I was really sad to learn that they went under. Um, so, you know, there, there's still moodfabric.com, which I'm not totally a fan of. Um, you know, they don't have a great return policy. If you order it, it's just, you know, you, you can't return it. You're stuck with the fabric and you can only, I mean, I, I could actually go to Mood Fabric. I live in New York, so I could take the train into the city and actually go to Mood Fabric to look at fabric, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm kind of married to ordering fabric from the internet. I mean, Nimble Thimble, they have fabric, but it's mostly quilting cotton. So, you know, when it comes to fashion fabric, the internet is my best friend right now. Um, but I did a little digging and found a seller on Alibaba, or no, not Alibaba, <laughs> AliExpress.com. And I've never purchased anything from AliExpress, but they had fabric that, holy cow guys, was a dead ringer. They had fabric that just ticked all the boxes. And are you ready for this? Look at that. I mean, it's very, very similar. I mean, I don't think it's as sparkly or as shiny, but you know what? 
that's okay because, you know, I'm not... <laughs> You know, while I do love the the glitz of the original, the, the Vampire's Wife version, it's just a little too loud for me, and I like the fact that this one's just a little more toned down. Um, and according to the seller, this is silk. What is this? I believe silk chiffon. I have to look on online, but apparently the same fiber content as the the Vampire's Wife website has. So, I mean, this is definitely a very, very close second. So it's a little sheer. Um, so let me see. Yeah, it's definitely sheer, but that's okay because the, uh, looking at, you know, the, the Vampire's Wife version, it is sheer on the sleeves and then lined on the bodice. So I do have some lining, this delightful, let me see. Is it delightful? I need more, more adjectives, but yeah, it's just a really nice kind of like sateen. What is this? What did I order? This I actually ordered from Mood Fabrics. This type of fabric is actually called Bemberg, which I've never worked with, but um, according to Mood Fabrics, it's actually a very nice fabric to use for lining. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm going to be using to make the actual dress. But before I cut into this fabric, I wanted to do a test run first. So I grabbed some of this plaid fabric from my stash. I, I think I bought like, eight yards of it to make a robe at one point and it never came to fruition. So this has just been kind of languishing in my stash and I'm like, it would be cool to have like a plaid flannel, cozy dress to, you know, just casually wear, you know, as you do. And that's currently what I'm working on. So I've made the bodice. I still have to add the skirt and add the zipper and I will have a nice dress. So, you know, it's coming along really nicely. And, you know, for a test, <laughs> for a test pattern, I kind of bit off more than I can chew because working with plaid and stripes in general is, is a challenge because you have to make sure everything lines up. It's all symmetrical. And I've noticed that working with flannel in particular, the, the weave is kind of, it, it likes to shift a little bit. It was, it was definitely a challenge for me to <laughs> get to this point. Yeah. I'm kind of letting it marinate for a little bit. And then hopefully this weekend I can, you know, tack on the skirt and finish her up. Um, but yeah, just a very, very simple, straightforward pattern. Uh, you know, again, like these are, these patterns in general, I mean, I mean they claim to be, or at least this one, the McCall's uh, Level 2 Learn to Sew. You learn a lot of techniques, including sewing darts, gathers, uh, setting in sleeves. I mean, yeah, what a great little pattern. And then this one, um, I don't know, it doesn't really say that it's easy, but it looks relatively easy. So, go figure. But anyway, and that my friends is what's been happening on the sewing front. So yay, we are garment sewing again. I'm, I'm so happy about it guys. Uh, quilting, you know, yeah, still, still love, love quilting. But after finishing the peacock quilt, um, I need a little bit of a breather. So I'm, I'm sure you can understand that that was a labor of love. Uh, but as far as other rabbit holes, this one kind of came out of left field. I did not see it coming until, you know, I randomly watched a YouTube video about it. And guys, I, I spend way too much time on YouTube. It, I mean, it, I wouldn't say it's unhealthy, but I, I love, I love YouTube. I learn so much from it and I'm like a sponge. I love to learn new things. And I stumbled on a video on how to make candles and, you know, the art of candle making, because as you can see, I love candles. It is candle season and I love, I feel like it's always candle season. You know, there's a, you know, depending on what time of year of it, you get out different scents and everything, but I do love me some candles. And yeah, I, I think one day I just got curious about it and looked it up online and the process of hand pouring candles, I was like, this looks like a lot of fun. Let's, let's give this a try. And I actually purchased a relatively inexpensive uh, kit online. Uh, you know, it comes with everything you need to make a candle or a couple actually. So it comes with a pouring pot. It comes with, you know, wax. It comes with scents. It comes with wicks, everything you need. And it was so much fun, so much fun that I actually ordered. <laughs> Guys, see what happens when I don't sit down and record for a few weeks. It's like, I come back and suddenly I'm a totally different person. I'm doing totally different things. It's it's wild. I, I, I'm i sorry, I not sorry, can't explain it. It's just who I am. So yeah, I ended up ordering some more wax, more fragrance oils to make different scents, and I've just been having a lot of fun. I don't know if you can tell, but behind me, 
Yeah, there's been a lot of experimenting and testing happening because one thing that I've learned when it comes to candle making, I don't want to get too much into the weeds with this, but um, I will say that, you know, when it comes to making candles, not all wicks and waxes play well together. So it, it's about finding a delicate balance and you have to test a couple of combinations to see which types of wicks will work with the type of wax you're using and the fragrance oil percentages. So that's the craziness that's happening behind me right now. And I've actually created a holiday scent that I'm excited to make or to put into candle form. So uh, I think that's also what's gonna happen this weekend. And you know, the wheels are turning guys, uh, the wheels are turning and I'm having so much fun with it that I'm actually thinking about incorporating candles into my online shop. I know, again, this came out of nowhere, I know. Um, but yeah, if that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments down below, would you like to see candles in addition to yarn in my in my online shop, volunavineyarns.com. That's essentially what I've been up to <laughs> since I last sat down and chatted with you. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Yes, there is one thing that I do wanna share with you um, before I let you guys go. My friend Tara, we met at Rhinebeck a while ago, but when I moved to Port Chester, turns out she's very local to me and we actually have a knit group that get together every once in a while. And yeah, it's just, again, I, I just feel so incredibly lucky to have moved here and to have met so many wonderful creative knitters. Uh, you know, the, the internet, again, like the internet, can be a very scary, dark place, but for when it comes to just meeting and connecting with like-minded individuals, it's it's a wonderful, amazing place to be, and I'm so lucky. Uh, I'm so lucky for this YouTube channel because it's, yeah, it's just introduced me to so many people, opened up so many doors. Anyway, you, I've said this so many times in the past, but you know, it just, it completely perpetually blows my mind how amazing the knitting community can be <laughs> and you know having moved here knowing nobody uh you know just having people reach out to me inviting me to hang out and get to know everybody it's just yeah um and tara is one of those people and you know she is actually an amazing knitwear designer uh she's also known as crystal t knits on ravelry and on instagram and she just released um two really beautiful patterns that I thought I would share with you because if you are looking for um, some holiday knits to gift or just something to knit for yourself just to kind of relax or wind down after a long year, I think I think these patterns might be right up your alley. She just designed the gingerbread advent shawl where as soon as as soon as she shared it with me, I was like, this is so cool. I like if I didn't have a million other things going on, I would probably cast it on myself. I mean, it doesn't even have to be for for the holidays. It could be for anything. Like if you have a bunch of mini skeins laying around, this would be perfect. But this pattern in particular, the gingerbread advent shawl is so clever. I love it because um, each day has a different stitch representing bricks on a gingerbread house. And I mean, she's, she's awesome. Uh, and then she also has a pair of scrappy socks if you are looking to stash bust some scraps. Her desert rose socks, which have a really beautiful kind of chevron pattern. I believe you can purchase the socks a la carte, but you can also purchase the collection, uh, which is a collection of six patterns, hat, socks, mitts, cowl, shawl, and blanket. And uh, if you purchase the collection, you get the sock pattern now, and throughout next year, the other pattern patterns will be released least. So just to give you guys a heads up. And Tara is so generously offering 20% off on all of her patterns. Uh, so please go run over to Ravelry, check her patterns out. I have a few of her patterns and admittedly I have yet to cast one on, but I absolutely love her aesthetic. I love the inspiration behind her designs. And yeah, guys, just go check out her patterns because she is generously offering 20% off now through, I think now through February. So if you go to Ravelry and add some of her patterns to your cart and use the code Volenvine, you'll get 20% off on all of her patterns. So uh, thank you so much, Tara. I couldn't resist sharing the love because she's so incredibly talented and just a wonderful human being. And yeah, so, all right, my friends, I, I have indeed waffled on for much too long this week. Just so much to catch you up on. Thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. If you're new here and you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe down below. And if you would like to become a member and support the work that I do here, you can always do that by clicking the join button down below this video because if you do that and you join the a cup of something and higher tier you can get some bonus content from yours truly and i would be so grateful happy knitting and i will see you next time bye